I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my everyday life living in Latin America. Today, I'm going to be answering a question that no one has asked, but people should actually be asking because it helps explain a lot about life in Nicaragua and how you're going to interact with just society in general. And that is, what is the most terrible thing you could do after you move to Nicaragua? Maybe it's not quite that bad, but we're going to talk about what that is right after that book. Before we get distracted with a lot of truly heinous things that you could become like a homicidal maniac or something like that, that is not quite what we're meaning. There are some very clearly universally horrible things you could do anywhere, and it would be about the worst thing you could possibly do. Somehow personally manage to set off a nuclear war, for example, or depopulate the entire planet, or somehow cause tripled performance, global warming, single-handedly. Okay, those things would be really terrible. That's not what we're talking about. But within the realm of reason of things that people actually do and often will do without even understanding that they're doing it, or they'll know that they're doing it, but never put their finger on the fact that it is a really significant problem. That's what we're going to be answering. And before we get too far along and you guys are just left wondering, yes, my knee is healing up quite nicely. I've gotten a good bill of health report so far from my nurse who is still here twice a day debriding the wound. I don't have too much of that left. I'm told, fingers crossed, that it's almost done. Uh, that is quite painful, but it's, it's healing very well. He's very happy with the progress. I am still on the IV. I got one day reprieve from wearing the IV. It'll be going back in in an hour from now. So not super looking forward to that, but it's really not a painful thing. We got some wind. I can hear some palm trees falling and uh, I am feeling quite good. You can hear it in my voice that I have my energy back. I actually only slept one hour last night. I wasn't tired. That's maybe one of the medicines they're giving me. I don't know, but I was sleeping like all the time before that. I was getting a lot of fatigue and now I'm feeling really good. So the healing's coming along well. My feeling is really good. Uh, I can walk and stuff. I've been able to go out. I went to the the the, the dance uh, event at the Desperados the other night. All that went really well. So things are going really well with my health. So let's get on to today's question. Before we actually answer the question, we have to ask another one. And that is, what is the biggest crisis going on in Nicaragua right now? And that I talk about this a lot. So if you've watched a lot of my videos, you're going to instantly know the answer to this question. And it's cool that you guys can follow along like that. And I appreciate that. And by the way, of course, if you want to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller or hit that join button down there to become a member. Those things do a lot to help. But of course, just watching the videos is super meaningful as well. And get down with your comments and questions. That is how we find out what things you guys are wanting to know much of the time. So that's, that's really valuable. I do appreciate that. And please send in some video questions. I love it when you guys do that. Okay. So the big crisis here in Nicaragua is employment. And this has been the case for quite some time, at least five to maybe eight years. And before that, unemployment was not a non-problem. It just wasn't the, this big crisis that it is today. Right now, there is a major problem with being able to find enough jobs to keep people employed. This in turn deflates wages or not really deflates them, but keeps them low. They haven't come up due to this. There's just no pressure to bring them up. And so we have a very depressed economy economy, because there aren't enough people working, that means there's not enough people then going out shopping. That does, doesn't create additional demand and is just, it, economies work better when people are able to work, generally obvious. But that's the big thing going on in Nicaragua. So more than anything, the government has to focus on and does focus on trying to find ways to make sure that as many people as possible are able to remain employed and as many new people as possible become employed, whether this is providing extensive training programs, which they have all throughout the country. They have amazing technical schools, which sounds like uh, you might be going into engineering or rocket science or something like that, computer science, but it's much more like you're going into uh, food service. You're going into to auto repair, you're going into uh, things that we would associate with the Board of Cooperative Education Services in New York, for example. Those kinds of technical schools are all over where you can learn a hands-on trade, plumbing, absolutely, home construction, things like that uh, are, are widely available and very, very inexpensive or free uh, so that you can go out and, and get into the workforce. And those people even intern in the workforce regularly so they have real practical experience and people can feel confident hiring them when they're done. So there's a lot of wonderful programs out there. 
uh, beyond the university systems, which Nicaragua has tons of and takes people from all over the country, plus all over the region into Nicaragua for their uh, advanced education programs. So there's a lot of that, but they need jobs to send people into. And some of that is being handled by a small amount of growth in tourism, but that is a terrible place to create new jobs if you have choices. When you don't have choices, you take what you can get, and you always have a few more spots to fill in than any one thing's going to solve. So tourism is an important spot to simply bolster the nation's economy, and it gets uh, other types of investment to come in. It gets more eyes on the country. It has a lot of positive effects beyond economic ones or direct economic ones. But more importantly, the country's putting a huge amount of its investment into things like uh, road infrastructure, internet infrastructure, power infrastructure, things that allow for other industries to grow and flourish within the country. That's where their focus is because they're trying to create much more stable and much more broadly focused career paths forward for its citizens. So these are where the investment of the country is going is where its focus is much of the time. If you're going to impact something positively in the country, the thing that they're hoping most that you will positively impact is, at the end of the day, the quality of life for everyone in the country. But in a practical sense, the thing that they're looking for is employment or raising wages. But realistically, no one can raise wages. You you can overpay someone personally, of course, but that has very little useful impact to the country compared to creating jobs because it will not have a knock-on effect. If you pay one person too much, it really doesn't help anybody. But if you hire twice as many people instead, that really does help in many different ways. So at some point, they're going to want to raise the wages, but they have to start by getting people who are out of work employed or else you risk by raising wages that fewer people will become employed. This is the same fear they have in the United States. It's generally unfounded, but the United States, it is completely unfounded because there's never enough workers. So it's not a problem. You're not going to raise the minimum wage so much as to make there not be enough jobs. There's always someone able to, to you know, there's always a job available. There's not enough workers, but here in Nicaragua, it is the opposite. There's never jobs available. There's always enough workers. So raising the cost too much will actually cause people to lay people off and use fewer workers. You don't want that to happen. So they have to balance that. But someday when the market is saturated, similar to the U.S. in the number of employed people percentage wise of the population, they will then be able to focus on raising the minimum wage significantly and raising the average wage significantly. Those things have to come in time. So right now we can focus pretty clearly on employment being the most important thing from a what matters to the country and to the government perspective. These are the things that allow them or the thing that allows them to positively impact the country in the most important way today. Now, there's lots of other things that they have to do all the time, maintain health care, maintain sovereignty, all those kinds of things. But they're just kind of a steady state. Are they there? Yes. OK, now that they're there, we can deal with the crisis, which is this employment thing. So what does that leave us with? What is the most terrible thing that you could be doing as a potential expat who is coming to Nicaragua? What you can risk doing here in Nicaragua, and this is actually pretty easy as an expat to do or to think you want to do. Loads of people without coming to Nicaragua first, so this explains why it doesn't occur to them that this is going to be a problem or that what they're thinking is going to result in this, right? So that's key that in so many cases, this is something that happens accidentally or something that doesn't actually happen, but someone thinks they're going to do and are sure that they want to do and without being here, somehow coming from especially places like the United States and Canada, where so many factors are backwards compared to Nicaragua, that they're sure that the thing that they're saying is a positive thing. And so they, they're not meaning to do something bad. That's what makes this so dangerous is that it is so easy to be sure you're doing what is expected of you and you're doing exactly the worst reasonable thing you could ever do. And that is take away a Nicaraguan's job. It is so easy for an expat to somehow accidentally take away a Nicaraguan's job. And let me give you some examples of things that come up on a regular basis. First, a lot of expats when looking to move into Nicaragua, the first thing that they're, they're gonna hound on is, oh, I've gotta get a job, I have to work in Nicaragua. Any job you do, remember, there's unlimited workforce available. There's no such thing as a shortage in Nicaragua. There's no town that has a shortage. There's no career path that has a shortage. It's not a real thing. So there's always a person who is willing to do or to learn to do the job that you are thinking of. So any 
attempt to take a job here, even if you are legally allowed to work here, which would be super difficult, expect that that is never going to be the case, but that's a different conversation. Assuming you were able to work here, you had the legal right to work here, you would never want to do so. And again, we also always have this conversation about how the pay scales and, and other opportunities are such that you would never benefit from doing so, but ignore that as well. If you were thinking about the damage you would do to the country and to an individual family that you would cause to not be able to put food on the table, it would never cross your mind to be willing to take a job in Nicaragua no matter how much you felt you needed it, you would not do so. You can only possibly do so if you do not comprehend the risk and pain that you would cause to real people in doing so. And I realize that's the problem. No one is thinking about or realizing just how bad that is, that you are taking someone who is on substance level, someone who is barely surviving, taking someone who is just barely allowing their children to eat and ripping the food out of their hands and saying, sorry, I'm going to take your job. I know I'm not a Nicaraguan. This isn't for me. I want your job. And if you were able to get it, which you won't be able to, but if you did, that is the result that would happen, right? And it may not be the exact person whose job you take. It They end up taking the job of someone one position down from them, and it knocks on until someone at the bottom of the chain can't feed their family. But that is the result every single time. There will never be an exception to that until the market is saturated, at which point, yes, coming down and taking a job will be a completely different thing, just like going to the US where taking a job is a good thing because there aren't enough workers. So someday when Nicaragua is short on workers, great, it'll be different. And this applies to any country in the world. If they're a place that doesn't have enough jobs, you can't go and take one without hurting someone. And if you're in a place that doesn't have enough workers, going and working there is beneficial under normal circumstances. There's always some exception, but that's how it works. But because most of us come from North America, where the situation is there's always a shortage of workers or has been for such a long time, it often would never naturally occur to us that going somewhere and working wasn't exactly the thing that we need. We're used to hearing about immigrants and expats coming to the United States. Immigrants are the ones who stay. Expats are the temporary ones. They're all expats, right? But some who decide to make it their long-term home qualify as immigrants. And uh, when expats come to the United States and, and want to take a job, we always argue for how good that is. Now, I realize some people don't want expats coming into the United States, taking or not taking a job, and that's mostly separate from the economy. But when it comes to the economic strength and power and safety of America, when it comes to US or Canada and, and keeping our businesses going and keeping our communities safe, you want expats coming in from places like Nicaragua as much as possible because it bolsters the economy, because you need workers who are going to move into those lower paying roles so that the existing uh, workers who already exist in the country, hence the term existing, can move up to higher paying roles. They can backfill so that they have that pressure to move up because there are enough open positions. So because that is the way it always works or essentially always works, we never actually see employment by expats as a negative, as long as they're doing a good job. Of course, if they come in and they can't do the job, that's always bad. That's a separate thing. But someone taking a job, assuming that they're qualified to do so, is always really a positive. It's helping the economy fill a gap. Here in Nicaragua, that is a, I think an aphid crawling across the lens, by the way. Here in Nicaragua, it is such the opposite. We don't need to fill any empty jobs. Every single job is full. Every single potential job is going to be full. There isn't a shortage. So every single person potentially taking a job hurts. So I know some people are Nicaraguan citizens who moved away long ago or somehow have dual citizenship and have absolutely every legal right to work in the country. But Given that you have the opportunity not to work in the country, given that you have access to work somewhere else with your dual citizenship, you will do real harm to Nicaragua if you use that opportunity. You will also hurt yourself dramatically. This is where the protection comes in, is that there is no situation where you will think this through and result in wanting to work in Nicaragua. That will never be the case. Everyone, every single person is sure they're gonna find a loophole to that. They're sure they want to somehow work here locally. It will never happen. It will never happen, not until the economy changes completely. It simply won't happen. I know that everybody thinks they're going to find an exception. You're not. It's not a doctor, not an engineer, not an IT worker, not a programmer. There is none of those positions. Every single position you can think of, if you take that position in the United States, it's going to pay more. If you take it in Nicaragua, it's going to pay less. If you take it in the United States, it's going to help your country. If you take it in Nicaragua, it's going to hurt your country. Every time, no exceptions.
where you tend to run into a little bit more problems and you're totally allowed to do this and it's a great thing so consider coming down and doing this is when you invest here in the country and you become an employer you obviously do so under the auspices of the government for the purpose of creating jobs or at very least growing the economy i know that some people come down and create a very small business that doesn't require employees at which point you kind of don't make much of a difference and nobody cares you're still allowed to do that but it doesn't do very much the idea is that you would come down start a business and end up employing Nicaraguans. You're not allowed to employ anyone else. So if you do need any employees, if your company does well enough that it needs a worker, that will be a Nicaraguan worker and you'll be keeping someone occupied, putting food on their table and paying their taxes. And that means you're making a small contribution to the country. The more people you employ, the bigger the contribution you make. This is pretty straightforward. So these are really important things. This is why the government is so inviting of so many people to come down is because they need these investors one way or another to uh, create this need for more workers. Now, some people who are not investing directly, but are coming down and eating food, renting houses, doing all kinds of things, they end up creating some of these jobs uh, in an ancillary way. They may not be employing them directly, but they're using the services that they provide through other businesses uh, or through just directly hiring people temporarily. And this accumulates extra work within the, the economy, even if an individual specific job cannot be attributed to those people. I hope that that makes sense. The risk that some people have, a lot of people have, is that they come down and they start a company and then they want to hire some people. Well, they're not used to hiring Nicaraguans. That seems very scary. They Maybe they don't have a lawyer. Maybe they don't have an accountant. Maybe they have no idea what they're doing. Maybe they don't think that the law applies to them. You can see the RADPAD people and how they approached a lot of this stuff and just made up their own rules, said anything that they wanted. In fact, made the claim in their year-end 2023 video that I recapped recently that being a tourist allowed you to be a worker in Nicaragua, which couldn't be farther from the truth. And uh, things like this, you can easily end up in a situation where you're like, oh, I've got a friend. I'm going to bring them in. He'll work for me because, you know, we've been friends for a long time. So I'm going to pay him to do it. Well, if that friend is not a Nicaraguan who is legally able to work in Nicaragua, you just stole a Nicaraguan's job because you created a job in Nicaragua that has, has to, by law, go to a Nicaraguan or someone authorized to work in Nicaragua, which is essentially always going to be a Nicaraguan, and gave it to someone else. That person presumably will not have working papers, right? How would they have working papers? If you had a friend who lived here for a really long time, somehow got their working papers here and wanted to come work for you, yeah, there's some way to come up with that scenario. But in reality, what ends up happening 99% of the time when this happens, either someone realizes what a bad idea that is because they're not going to be able to pay a rate that makes sense for someone to come in from somewhere else. They're not going to uh, have the paperwork they're supposed to have. They're going to be realizing really quickly that they're hiding from the police, hiding from Migracion, and hiding from the uh, taxation departments, trying to get away from someone stopping by and saying, hey, you seem to have employees, but you don't seem to be paying any taxes. How does this uh, How does this add up? That's not a question you want to have asked. You want to be able to say, oh, here's all my tax papers right here. Here you go. And they go, okay, cool. Nice. Nice. You're employing real Nicaraguans. That's not a conversation you suddenly want to have when someone comes knocking on your door with the police. And because this is such a significant thing, that's the kind of risk you take. Because like I I said, there's realistically nothing worse short of becoming, you know, a serial killer that's going to be on par with stealing jobs. Now, in this example, you're just stealing one, but you can see how it could add up quickly. You start a small business, you start calling up some of your friends. You've got a bunch of friends you've always wanted to work with. Maybe they're all nearing retirement and you're like, you know what? I'll pay everyone and, uh, you know, we'll have fun. It'll be this cool thing. And, and you bring in all these friends and they start working and you start paying them. And they're like, you're running a business in Nicaragua and your workers aren't legal workers. You have a major problem. Every single one of them represents a Nicaraguan who is literally somewhere waiting probably thousands of Nicaraguans who would love to have that job, who are capable of doing that job, who would do that job almost certainly for a fraction of the money, and you didn't employ them. Instead, you illegally employed someone else. This is where Americans like to kick around the term illegal immigrant. Well, this is an illegal expat, right? Presumably, they're not there to stay. They're not up to the level of, of immigrant. They're just an expat, but they're illegal expats, which when we say illegal immigrant in the United States, we mean illegal expats. Almost never are they immigrants. They're just expats, right? I, Americans love to avoid using expat when it really applies to the people coming into the United States, uh, but that is what they are. People like to say, well, you know, the people who are visiting Nicaragua, they're really immigrants. No, they're expats. 
Don't get the words wrong. You're justifying Americans getting the words wrong. Make everyone get the words right. Don't make everyone get the words wrong. So the word that applies in both cases is expat. So there's all these expats who go to the United States and don't have papers and are not legal and end up doing work. And a lot of people are very unhappy about that. Some people are not unhappy about that. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm not getting involved. I'm just saying this is the situation that people get angry about is when people do not have their papers. They don't have the right to work. They're not paying into the tax system. They're not contributing in the way that is expected of everyone in society. And I understand why they don't. So I'm not, I'm not judging here, right? But there is a situation that People who legitimately work and pay their taxes in the system generally don't appreciate when other people don't work and pay their taxes into the system and still get to get jobs and get a paycheck. That's what's going to be going on here. You're going to be an employer of illegal expats who are getting paid illegally. Right. So now you have a whole bunch of automatic things that have happened. One is uh, uh, immigration fraud. One is employment fraud. One is tax fraud. And there's really no way to get around them, because if you did any one of those correctly, it would flag the others. So then chances are, while there may be a way around this, you probably have incorporation fraud as your company can't be declaring all of its paperwork correctly in the country if all those other things are incorrect. Probably. So you almost certainly have incorporation fraud as well. This starts adding up to some pretty significant things to be doing as an immigrant or expat who's hanging out in a new country. And for a lot of people, you may think that you're somehow contributing. And to some small way, maybe you kind of are, but not in the way that it's expected. But taking a job away from a Nicaraguan is such a significant problem that even if you could come up with some way to justify it, they're not going to let it fly because exceptions to that rule are not ones that they can risk for really obvious reasons. So it is the most important thing for Nicaraguans to protect other than just the safety of the populace is the employment of the populace. So they're not going to let that slide. And this is a really, really bad problem that we see all the time. So anytime that you're thinking about an activity, you're coming into Nicaragua, and this applies to any place that's in a similar boat. This is not unique to Nicaragua. Nicaragua just happens to be really good, one, about protecting its citizens. It, it takes that passionately. Two, it's really focused on the things that actually matter. And three, I just happen to be living here, so this is the place that I'm talking about. But when you're coming to a place like Nicaragua, take some time to think about what your actions are doing. Are the actions that you're taking day to day somehow creating jobs, either by directly hiring people that are Nicaraguan and hiring them correctly? Great, you're a, a wonderful contributor. Are you creating jobs ancillarily by going to a restaurant and all those workers at the restaurant need to be employed to feed you? Great, that's a great way to contribute to the economy as well. Are you investing directly by putting money into the economy that then hires people? Great, wonderful things to be doing. Are you somehow sucking a job out of Nicaragua that Nicaragua would have had, but somehow you're filling that job either by you trying to work in some way or by you hiring someone who isn't Nicaraguan in some way, finding a way around hiring a Nicaraguan to do a working job in Nicaragua? That's where you're gonna run into a problem. There you're not contributing, you're anti-contributing. And most people are not gonna do this. Most people are not gonna try to do this. Most people are never gonna cross their mind to do an activity that would do this. But enough people will accidentally either try to do this and, and go down a long path, right? The reason here is not to stop a bunch of people from doing this, because very few people actually do. It's that a lot of people waste a lot of time trying to be good people, right? We're not talking about people who are trying to take jobs away, that's rare. I've met them, but they're very rare, right? We're talking about people who think they're supposed to work themselves. They think that that's how you contribute to a situation like this, but it is not. But because they come from a different context, it feels reasonable. We're talking about people who think they have to do it, like it's a rule or something, but it's not. It's not a, not a practical way for it to work. They think they have to do it because it's how they'll survive. It is not. That is definitely not the case. So there's all these little pieces and they add up. And it, so it's easy for a lot of people that I talk to every day to go down a long path and, and waste a lot of their energy and a lot of their mental space and have a lot of confusion because they're trying to solve, they're determined to try to solve a problem or a perceived problem. In many cases, it's not even a problem in a very specific way. And, and not seeing where the really, really unacceptable, this will never fly piece comes into play, 
That's why I want to explain this. Now, this comes to light because I'm angrily dealing with a neighbor who actually intentionally is doing this stuff and is committing every bit of the frauds that we're, we're pretty sure. I can't speak for sure. And I'm not going to say who it is, obviously. Uh, but we, we're, we're pretty aware of actually a couple people who are doing exactly this. It is a common thing for people to do uh, who are running fraudulent businesses who do not uh, come here uh, to make a positive impact. They're here to just take as much as they can for themselves. And that's a problematic thing. Like I realize when you're moving abroad, it's difficult to say, hey, you should become an expat. And you say, you know what I could do? I could become an expat and go dedicate my life to being good for the place that I'm moving to. I'm not there yet. So I don't even know these people, but I'm going to go make a positive difference in their world, right? That's, yeah, sure. If I said, would you like to go make a positive impact somewhere? You'd say, well, I sure don't want to make a negative impact somewhere. Duh. Yeah. Right. But you're not saying I'm going to move abroad. I mean, some of you are, but very few are going to say, I'm going to move away from my home country, upheave my life up. Is that how you say it? Um, and, and upturn everything and change my entire life and move to a new country. Cause I'm sure I'll fall in love with its people and want to make a positive impact to them. That's not what you say. You say, I want to do something that's right for me. I hope people benefit from it in the process, right? That's generally the thought process that happens. If the second part even happens at all, a lot of people have no idea that them moving to a country could have a positive impact. But here from the perspective of Nicaragua, right, we're really like trying to say, this is a country that needs help. And especially from, uh, you know, the United States and Canada, the reason that there are problems here is because of what the United States and Canada have done to Nicaragua, right? Almost entirely the United States, but Canada has contributed uh, by not standing up to the U.S. and following along with the propaganda and following along with the misinformation and discouraging uh, uh, help and, and alignment with Nicaragua and, and so forth. But the United States has done so much damage to the country, right? And, and has not paid its reparations for war crimes, right? There's a literal debt owed uh, in court. There is a figurative debt uh, from its colonial era, which devastated the country, and ongoing sanctions and embargoes and, and means to cripple the economy. And that's why there aren't as many jobs, right? They don't have the ability to do as much work here because they're not able to export as much to the United States because they're blocked or, or tariffed uh, out of existence pretty much. And, uh, and, and, you know, people don't have the ability to go fly places. There's a million little tiny ways that make it not technically impossible, but super, super hard compared to every other country in the region to be able to work and do things, not just locally, but around the world. Nicaraguans really struggle in ways that people who have not had to deal with a Nicaraguan visa or, or passport getting visas have any idea. It is so hard to leave your own country here. They're essentially prisoners within their own country in a practical sense. And it's mostly a financial prison, but it's all orchestrated that, well, we lower the money here, we make this thing more expensive, and, and pretty soon there's no flights and it's very hard to go anywhere. And these are things that Nicaragua is fighting very hard to fix, and it looks like a bright future ahead. But they have to fight through some unbelievable barriers in a very short amount of time to be able to do that. And those are things that are happening. So when when Americans and Canadians come to Nicaragua, there really should be a certain amount of desire to positively impact the country. And it's okay to come just because you think Nicaragua is the right place for you and you're just not willing to negatively hurt the country. That's fine. But there are a certain number of people who come to the country, and that's who I'm speaking of. Uh, and, and, you know, 100%, honestly, are not from North America that I've had to deal with. So that's a positive thing as a North American to be able to say that, that I have yet to experience this from any North American. It's just theoretical that North Americans could do this, right? It is from different parts of the world that are not even on the continent uh, where they have come to Nicaragua and they are clearly here to just suck everything out of the country as much as they can. They're willing to commit whatever illegal acts are necessary. They're willing to lie and cheat and steal and, and take advantage to prey upon the poorest, most vulnerable people for personal gain. And that's what makes me personally very upset. Whenever you're seeing me get really upset on the channel, that's what's going on, right? That's what I'm like. These are people who don't have the resources to defend themselves, in this case, financially being preyed upon. And, and I know my audience doesn't want that to happen either. That's why I want to educate you guys on 
what it would look like and what actions would end up accidentally leading to that. No one on my channel is doing that intentionally, obviously, and they never would, right? No one's going to watch this channel and be like, oh, I love this Scott's content, but man, I want to screw these people. That's just unreasonable, right? Completely crazy. But there's a ton of people on my channel who have never been exposed to a bunch of these things and don't realize what those factors are. And by enlightening you, you could be like, oh my gosh, I, I was going down a path that, okay, probably would have just dead ended. It wouldn't have actually resulted in me hurting anybody, but I didn't realize that that was the reason it's going to run into a dead end. Knowing that that's going to create the dead ends, that's going to make the problems. I'm never going to get my residency if I do that. I'm never going to be happy there if I do that. I'm going to, oh, Oh, now I know how to think about things and it allows you to just plan your life better, whether it's jobs or investing or whatever. You'll get way more out of your Nicaraguan experience by understanding these things, both for you. You're not going to spin your wheels trying to do something that's not going to work out, but also understanding how your presence here or your activities here have a potential negative impact if you're really not careful. But if you are careful, how they can have an immense positive impact and you can not just make a better life for yourself. Of course, we want you to have a better life for yourself. I want everyone on my channel to, and, and lots of people who aren't on my channel as well, to have a wonderful, awesome new life. And I also want you to have a positive impact on any place that you go. And hopefully a lot of you are coming to Nicaragua and have a really positive impact here specifically. But that doesn't mean we don't want you to go to Guatemala and have a positive impact or Mexico or, or Argentina or Bolivia or wherever, right? As, as expats or potential expats, we have an opportunity to positively impact ourselves. For sure, that's why we do it, but to also positively impact the world and the places that we move to. And I think, especially given what my audience is like, Knowing that your positiveness for yourself results in a super positive impact for the place you're moving to is going to make you love the positiveness of yourself so much more because that's what good people are like. It's a feedback loop of your own positive awesomeness. So thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller and I will see all of you tomorrow.